context before I start. Um, my, I'm going to be, for this presentation, role-playing as someone who works for the city of Vancouver. Uh, that's where I grew up. And you're my audience, 17 owners and managers of uh, economy to mid-scale properties near the downtown Vancouver area. My pitch to them is to get them to use their excess room occupancy to provide uh, semi-permanent housing for homeless in the downtown east side. That's the area over there in red. It's an impoverished neighborhood that's right next to the city center and some of the richest areas of the city. Good evening, and thank you for joining me. My name is Fred Ho, and I'm an outreach coordinator for the city of Vancouver. I'm very excited to speak with you all today because I love my job, and I love working for this beautiful city. I think we're all very lucky to be here. I've lived in East Vancouver my whole life, and ever since grade eight, I went to school on the west side, so I would take a bus through downtown to get home. I'm sure many of you have either driven or taken a bus through downtown at some point in your life and know firsthand how nice that trip can be. First you get this view from the Granville Street Bridge as you're crossing over into downtown, and then you're on Granville Street itself with all of its shops and restaurants. And even though you're completely surrounded by skyscrapers, you get these glimpses of nature, whether it's the mountains, the sunset, a stray deer crossing in front of your vehicle. <laughs> Welcome to Canada, right? <laughs> anyway, at this point in your ride, surrounded by all these wonderful views and such an affluent community, you might think that Vancouver is just the greatest city. But then you take a right onto East Hastings Street, and you've entered the downtown east side, an area known for its struggles with homelessness and substance abuse. I remember taking the bus through this area every single day in grade 8, looking out at these people and being afraid. But as I grew older and learned more about the downtown east side, I realized that I had no reason to be scared because these people aren't dangerous. In fact, they're people like any other, except they're struggling with challenges that some of us can't even imagine. That's why I'm here today to ask that you please consider as hotel owners using excess room occupancy at your properties to provide housing for those in need. With your help, we can end unsheltered homelessness in Vancouver once and for all. I'm going to first go over the issue of unsheltered homelessness and discuss how you can solve this problem. Then I'll dive into risk management strategies and a cost-benefit analysis. To begin, here's our situation. Downtown Eastside homeless shelters are completely full, but your properties are not. According to our local area profile of the downtown Eastside, its homeless population is 846. And even worse, 191 of these people are turned away from homeless shelters every single night because they're full. This leads to bigger problems. For example, homeless downtown east side youth are twice as likely to start using intravenous drugs compared to youth from other parts of the city. And Simon Fraser University researchers have determined that people on the downtown east side who are using social services cost taxpayers $10,600 annually each, which amounts to $152 million annually. I gathered all of you here today because your 17 properties represent 1,600 keys in or near the downtown east side area. And with an average occupancy of about 70%, according to Smith Travel Research, 489 of your rooms are on average unoccupied every single night. If you offered these rooms as semi-permanent housing to help the homeless, this would be more than twice the amount needed to make sure that those people turned away by homeless shelters are taken off the streets. I imagine you're worried about the risks of putting up the homeless and supporting them directly at your properties. So that's some good news. Our model would allow you to manage for risk by carefully controlling who you might directly support on your hotel, at your hotels. We at the city would work closely with homeless shelters to ensure the proper screening of anyone who you might help directly. And these homeless shelters in the downtown east side, they have profiles of the residents that stay with them. So the only people that would move from the homeless shelter to your hotel would be people that have been proven to be completely clean of substance abuse and criminal activity. The best part about this is that just because you're ensuring the safety of your hotel doesn't mean you don't still get to help homeless substance abusers. If you take up a non-addict at your property, you're opening up a spot at the homeless shelter for someone who might still be struggling with substance abuse. And having a roof over your head is one of the first steps to quitting. The ultimate goal would be that the people you help directly at your properties are able to get back on their feet and find a new permanent home of their own. These people could be completely reformed addicts, or they might be people that have never even touched drugs in their lives. It could be a family that 
had to give up their home because of unforeseen financial burdens. It could be an 18-year-old fresh out of the foster care system who just needs a place to shower up before their first job interview. Or it could be two sisters struggling to recover from a history of abuse and suffering. These are sisters, Olive and Summer. They both grew up on the downtown east side, and this is a snapshot of their story. Being a youth in the downtown east side, that was scary. If you were to go up to someone and ask them what their background is, guaranteed they're going to tell you they were abused. Well, my first came back, I was staying with my dad. And my dad used to like, leave me out in the rain It brings me happiness. Gives me hope I know I can be a much better person for him. Yeah, life is much better. I have a job. Maybe my story could possibly help somebody else get out of their addictions. Olive and Summer are both reformed addicts. As you saw in the video, they were both abused as children and have suffered as a result. But unfortunately, they're not alone. In the downtown east side, 42% of the homeless are coping with mental illness, 35% are physically disabled, 77% of pregnant substance abusers were sexually exploited as children, and over half of the kids are from low-income families or are dealing with developmental problems. These are the issues that downtown Eastsiders face every single day. And if you sign on with this program, you'd be directly helping house the ones who manage to beat the odds and stay clean. Finally, you'll see that the cost of helping those in need is completely offset by the benefits, financial and social. The cost of using up your excess room occupancy has two main components, utilities and housekeeping. According to industry averages, these would be $308 and $273 per room per year for a total of $581 per year, or just $1.59 a day. I know you might be thinking about the cost of foregone revenue, but I'm not asking any of you to give up business in order to help the homeless. The idea is that with all 1,600 rooms between your 17 properties, any properties who have excess occupancy would pick up the slack and house the homeless for those who might be fully sold out on any given night. Now let's compare the costs to the potential upsides for your business. First and foremost, you would save almost $3,000 in property taxes every single year per room by switching from being classed as a class six business to a class three supportive housing facility. HBS values each of your rooms at approximately $200,000, meaning you're paying $3,000 in annual property taxes. With class three designation, this would be $30 per room instead of $3,000 per room. To be clear, your property tax savings for one room would be five times the cost per room and completely offset your expenses. You could also apply for community service grants and other tax incentives. And finally, there's the financial, uh, social benefits. You'd be making a dent in the 152 million tax dollars being spent on social services in the downtown east side. This money could be freed up and spent on uh, infrastructure renewal or other services which bolster the neighborhood's safety and security, ultimately increasing tourism and coming back to benefit you. I shared with you Olive and Summer's story and showed you how many others in the downtown east side have struggled like they have. But just because other people have faced the same challenges as Olive and Summer doesn't mean we should reduce their story to just a statistic. If you sign on with this program, you wouldn't be putting up the statistics at your hotel. You would be helping individuals like Olive and Summer who each have a story of their own. Stories of abuse and suffering, but also of perseverance, of recovery and of success. The next downtown east side success story could be one room night away from getting the break they need to get their life back on track. But they need your help. That's why I ask that you please decide by our meeting in two weeks whether you're on board with the program, and if so, a preliminary number of rooms you'd like to volunteer to the cause of ending homelessness in Vancouver for good. Thank you. hotels can serve and support their communities, which is one of those principles of hospitality.